Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Meaningful People Podcast. Thank you for clicking on this episode with Jonathan Razel. So many of us have benefited from his music. I think almost like literally everybody's Pesach Seder, we sing that song, Vihishe Amda. That's from him. That's came from his from his mind. Hashem planted it in his mind. It came from his guitar. You'll hear that story plus so much else. Jonathan Razel, the amazing conductor, orchestra leader singer really really so much in this episode of how he got to where he is today uh, i want to give a big mazel tov to our video editor it's really safless on your engagement mazel tov you and your kala it's your wife should be able to buy some yisrael only simcha and nachas if you see really safless on the street give him a big hug and say mazel tov and say thank you so much for making meaningful people meaningful people um, big thank you to our friends at albert and associates which is now known as ceremian because uh, when it comes to your finances, it's all about it being serene, serenity. You want to think about your finances and not be stressed out. Okay, so I'll tell you, like w- things you could use Moshe Alpert for. You want to invest money and have a nice return, you're going to call Moshe Alpert. You need life insurance for you, your wife, your kids. Uh, you're going to call Moshe Alpert. You want to start a Sedaka account where you're putting away money every single month and you know exactly this is my Meister card. You're going to call Moshe Alpert. Um, you want to get tickets to the Bronx Zoo on a Wednesday afternoon, you're not going to call Moshe Alpert. See how simple that was? For the important things, you're going to call Moshe Alpert at 718-644-1594 or email him at alpertmoshe at gmail.com. I also want to give a big shout out to our friends at Collars & Co. Do you see the shirt I'm wearing right now? Do you understand how comfortable I am right now? I don't even think you you could understand, but I'll tell you like this. I'm a guy, I don't like, you know, being these shirts that are heavy and and I like being cold, I guess I, I guess you could say it like that. So this is like the perfect shirt for me. It's short sleeves, but in the winter, you know, you can't go out looking like this. People are gonna think, oh wow, something's wrong with this guy. So I put a sweater over it and it looks like the most professional looking shirt ever. It's got the buttons, it's got the collar, the strong firm collar. But you know what? If I'm not in that setting, I go inside, take it off. I got the short sleeves. It feels like a t-shirt. That's why you're going to go to calorsandco.com. You are going to love this shirt. Wives, if you want your husband to wearing a shirt that you know he'll be comfortable in, you'll know he'll look good in, then you'll go for him to collarsandco.com. Make sure to use promo code MEANINGFUL for 15% off. That is promo code MEANINGFUL for 15% off a purchase over $100. You're going to get the shirt. You're going to like the shirt. You're going to order the shirt again. And I'm going to say thank you, Collars and Co. Now enjoy this episode, everybody. You are listening to the Meaningful People Podcast. The podcast featuring our nation's most impactful, influential, and meaningful people. It's a pleasure to be joined by Harav, Yonatan Razel, all the way from... Where, where do you live now? Where, where in our Givat Zev. It's called Givat Zev. It's near Yerushalayim. Uh, about, let's say, 15 minutes outside of uh, Yerushalayim. But close. Can we, can we say a quick thank you to Chedva? for putting this oh, all yeah. together? Of course. Yes. Chedva and David. Bro, we oh. love you so much. You're the best. Wow. Gosh. What a uh, magic people. touch. When when they say things start to move, Baruch Hashem. <laughs> Even before they say, just when they think about it. Just think about it. Like Tzadikim. Yeah, amazing. Okay. Thank yeah, you. There, there's so much to get to in this conversation. Obviously, we mentioned briefly just in the beginning about Rabbi Berkowitz and you're part of that all-star lineup of Talmidim that he that he has, uh, many of which we've we've had on this podcast. You know, many, many, yeah. many of which. Um, I meet them. I meet them sometimes around the world. Uh, it was very special to be there. It was it's a while already, but uh, yeah. Anyways, take a, you want to tell, take us, take us, take us, you know, I guess, uh, upbringing. Okay, ready to go, ready to go, ready to go. Here. <laughs> yes, I'm with you guys. I need him. Yeah, so, so take us, take us to the, to, to your upbringing, the beginning of your life. What do you remember? What can you tell us? What was your childhood like? <laughs> Where did you grow up? You grew up in America, no? Okay, so I was born in the States, uh, in Manhattan. My parents were both, uh, both um, students uh, in NYU, psychology students, uh, and um, got married in the States. My father's from Holland, came to Israel, did the army in Israel, went to America, did his PhD, it's a long story. 
Um, and uh, uh, me, my, me and my brother Aaron, who's also an amazing musician, uh, born in the States. Then when I was about close to two years old, my parents made Aliyah to uh, Nachlaot, which was then, like, today it's like a Novorish kind of, you know, upcoming community, but then it was very like, you know, Machni Yehuda, uh, very simple people, happy people, um, Masoti, religious. We, by the way, we weren't, I wasn't born to a firm family. A um, little bit affiliated, my mother more, my, mother, my father less. But they came to Nakhlaut when I was a baby, as I said, and pretty much immediately they started connecting to the community there, a Sephardi community, uh, Persian, uh, Kurdish, Moroccan, um, and uh, we're Dutch American. But we're drawn into the, just the simplicity and the happiness and the love and the nigunim and the waking up at four in the morning and davening and, and the food and we're just loving it. And, uh, you know, I grew up, it's funny to say, but until I was about, you know, 13, 14, grew up, I was a chazan in a Sephardi community. Uh, didn't know that I wasn't, Ash, didn't know even know such a thing as Ashkenazi, Sephardi. Just everybody was mekubal and happy and, you know, just loving Hashem and loving people. It was a very, very open and warm community. Um, and then when I was about, uh, you know, like yeah, six, seven, we, we actually made the move. We became uh, religious very, very slowly. Um, I was actually a little bit in the lead of it. I was a very like spiritual kind of boy and I loved davening and, and uh, you know, and just connected to Hashem and to Shabbat and to music and nigunim. And uh, by the time I was, let's say, close to my bar mitzvah, the whole family um, became uh, religious also, easily, so to speak. In those years, also, a lot of music in our home. Um, music was something like, I have to say this uh, to be the emes. It wasn't like, you know, a choice. Music was everybody studied music. Uh, we all like, learned piano and composition and cello and the guitar, and we, we played together. It was a lot of fun, but it was just like, that's what we do. Like, you know, we're Levim also. So it's a family of, you know, like music is everywhere, listening to music, going to concerts, improvising. You know, I loved it, obviously, but it wasn't like, you know, I discovered myself. It was just something I did. And uh, I was a classical pianist for many years and and studied, you know, a lot of amazing music. And um, then was about 13, we had to make a decision if to send me to like a professional music school like a music academy kind of, boarding music academy school, or to like yeshiva, you know, yeshiva tichonit, what they call. And uh, we decided to go to music school, which is a very interesting decision because we were on the way, we we're in the middle of doing tshuva, but I went to a completely secular school. I was the only from boy in, in the whole of the, of the high school. And uh, I had, on one hand, the best musical education. I studied composition and conducting and, you know, improvising and hours of theory and, and recording and everything. But then I wasn't really, you know, studying Torah so much. I was religious, was from all these years, connected to Hashem. But then I wasn't in yeshiva. Um, we're learning at home. My father was learning with me, but I was ne wasn't in, in the, like a super um, from environment. But Dafka, in a sense... It kind of what created me as a as a person as an adult. I learned how to you know keep on, you know, davening and learning and this. But my environment around me was like um, not. But we were very much happy, like kids in my class, with friends, good friends, and you know I started composing songs and singing, and that's pretty much, uh, you know, in a nutshell, my upbringing. Um, then I started a bachelor's degree in conducting and composition in in the Jerusalem Rubin Academy. Um, when I was about 16 or 17. Then I went to the army for three years. After the army, I, I returned to the university and finished my first degree in conducting as an orchestral conductor. And then um, a few years later, I started, I was to Cambridge to do my master's degree in conducting. And then I decided one second, I'm going to stop for a minute. And I started going to yeshiva. I went to a few yeshivas to learn. I wanted to learn Torah. And, uh, I did a little bit of a stop in my career as a conductor and classical musician. Started composing songs. I discovered like the Jewish music scene, Karl Bach, uh, you know, just a lot of in the Shama music, which I didn't really know growing up. And um, started composing songs, my first songs. Uh, then uh, I'm just like, this is like a. Yeah, this is freestyle. 
No, I wanted to <laughs> yeah. jump in with with one thing because I think you are uniquely positioned to to shed light on like the process that leads into what a lot of people in the firm community experience, but they don't know quite with certainly not with the granularity that you can speak to of what goes into it, right? So people will go to a concert or people will go to a symphony and the Jewish music industry has come so far over just in, in my own, you know, lifetime from 20 years of your life. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. From the, uh, (laughs) I'm not quite as young as as Nahi. Um, but yeah, just in, in our short lifetime, the, how far it's amazing. It's amazing. Right. It's amazing. But, but like, what is your question? What is your question? My, qu- my question is what goes into the type of orchestra and symphony that, that you would conduct in Kasaria or in some of the magnificent um, venues that you've performed and you've conducted? What, just to describe what goes into planning for an experience that someone can listen to in a matter of seven minutes, but sort of the work that leads up into that. Okay, so first of all, um, classical music is a big chokhmah. Like Bichal, the orchestra, uh, the symphony orchestra is an amazing uh, vessel, is a kli, because it has like a lot of different colors, it has woodwinds and brass and, and strings and percussion. Like it's not, you know, it's like very vast, very large, beautiful sounding, very beautiful harmony, you know, it gives a lot of just enormous emotion and, you know, it's used also for films or for, you know, just, just as a, it's also a body that has its own music, like symphonies, but also the companies, like you know, rock and roll music or movie music and stuff. Basically, when you um, when you um, compose or conduct a symphony orchestra, so first of all, you have to learn about all different kinds of instruments, which is called orchestration. You learn about you know the flutes and the trombones and the trumpets and the violins and how you know they're how you compose for them and how the combining of them sounds. So that's mamish a malacha. You have to learn it. You can't just like sit and do it. You know what I'm saying? You have to, you have to study, you know, how, how the violins come together with the flutes and the flutes together with the horns and the horns with the brass and all different kinds of scales and different kinds of combinations of sounds, which is what I've been, I did that and studied that for many, many years. By the way, I have to say this. I, I opened a music school three years ago. Uh, it's called Shirat Alvim. That that's what we actually study there. Study, um, that's for the, for the firm community. That's different. I don't want to, I don't want to be, how do you say, um, latent uh, advertisement. So I'm going to stop right here. But <laughs> I, I, I've been teaching music and this is it's an amazing whole world of music. Um, I grew up, I grew up, you know, on, besides listening to like, you know, Beatles and all the, you know, Israeli music, which I grew up, you know, in jazz music and stuff. I grew up very much as like a classical musician. So I, for example, I practiced, you know, literally since, you know, my bar mitzvah until I was 18, literally, you know, five or six hours a day of classical piano. And I studied cello for, you know, years. And then I started conducting, which means I studied how to put t- together an orchestra, how to, how to work. It's like, it's more like being, um, you know, how to work with all the musicians, how to explain to them how to play exact. You know, it's like, a, how does, I mean, sometimes I'm using the words, like a man, man. Like, you know, when there's a basketball team, somebody who tells how to play, how do you call that? Uh, Point guy. A coach. Guy. A coach. So that's basically what a conductor does. He comes, he comes and he says, you know, violins, I want you to like put your, your bows just a little bit more like this and flutes. I want you to use your tongue and your, your blow the air a little bit lower and let's try to do this together. So that's, you know, that's what a conductor does. And conductor also has to listen and be able to, to hear 70, 80, 90 musicians and say, one second, you over there, trombone number three. I don't know. You're off the tune and you, uh, you know, and they, by the way, when I started, I was like 23, 24. They test you, you know, they go, they go, you know, they go, you know, they go off the tune and they're like, you know, they're waiting for you to say, you over there, clarinet number three, that was off, you know, and if you don't do that, they're like, oh no, this guy doesn't know what he's doing, you know, so basically, yeah. Very Amazing. interesting. Ha- happens to be, I, I, uh, j- just because we're on the topic of, of uh, the orchestra stuff, I texted someone I know who was in Kolal with you. I said, is there any questions or anything you think I should ask? You don't okay. tell me yeah, so. Yeah, okay. so yeah. something, something he texted me, which is very interesting. He said, um, he, asked, he, asked, he said, ask if he's naturally humble. And I'll get to that because he mentioned that you disappeared from Kola for a few days and you didn't tell anybody where you went, but they found out that you were orchestrating the Russian Philharmonic and you didn't say a word about it. That's kind of a big deal. I don't remember that. 
<laughs> you, you do or you don't. <laughs> I remember, I remember flying there um, to conduct, but I don't remember. Um, I don't remember not seeing. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> you know, first of all, something about I have to tell you something. I think that's very important about like living this kind of hybrid, hybrid. How do you say that? Yeah, that, 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 there it is. So living a half I day think in hybridic. Court, I think hybridic is one of the most popular. Or hybrid, words hybrid. Okay, heard. whatever. Hybrid, okay. It's so hybridic, you know, is Israeli for hybrid, okay? It's hybridic. wonderful. Well, I will hybridic. begin using that word, Yonatan. Hybridic. So you know, because that you is can now compose part it. Of, you go, so. Yeah. Hybridic. Okay, so <laughs> so um so I went so Bokoshem past twenty few years of my life I've been half day trying to study, you know, going to Kolal and then half day pursuing a career you know, family and other stuff. Um, and I feel that, you know, I found that the fact that you finish a concert or let's say come back from conducting the orchestra and you walk into the kolel and you open up a Gemara or, you know, Shulchan Aruch, whatever it is, and who cares you conduct an orchestra, you know, let's learn, you know what I'm saying? Did you, did you get the tastes? Do you understand the Rashi? But, you know, it's, it's like almost it's like a parallel kind of life. Um, you know, in a sense, it's almost like being a father. You come home, you know, and you have to change a diaper or you have to like, you know, help listen to your child tell you a story. Who cares that you just conducted or, or spoke for 3,000 people? You're, you know, you're Abba. Or in the same sense, you're Jonathan. I always joke about it that like, you know, so being like a from artist, I think it's a Chiddush. Um, you know, I know this from Ishai, Rebo, and all these old people who are like, Bokhashim, world famous. And in the morning, you have to have an Minyan, you know what I'm saying? You just perform yeah. for like 20,000 people. But in the morning, you have to go to the Mikveh, you have to go, you know, at center, you know what I'm saying? So who who cares who you are? You're, you're number 10, you know? So I think I think that, you know, that balance, you know, of being, being you know, learning in Kolel, you know, we're in Kolel, the Avoida is to stay, you know, to be focused on understanding the Torah and enjoying the Torah. So, yeah, it's not almost an issue so much, you know. And I feel that even, you know, all the time, and I love that. The fact that it's, you know, there's like a parallel world, you know. It's almost like, you know, yeah. you dress up, you go out, you give a concert, but in the morning you wake up. Okay, where were we? Ah, you're right, it's Machloikis. Let's see it. Who cares, you know, that you were just there? Yeah, okay. You know. I think it's it's a big matana. I think it's a, it puts you like in a very, uh, um, you know, a correct place if, you know, if you, if you want. So, so you mentioned, you mentioned that your parents were both studying in NYU psychology. Um, and you're, you threw yourself into music from a young age. Was there any point where you questioned? I know you said it wasn't really a choice. Music was just part of your life. It was part of your family's Correct. life. Was there any, was there any point that you took a step back and had to make a decision whether, you know, maybe I'm going to pursue, pursue psychology or maybe it's going to be music did that, that ever happened for you? Hamash, it happened a lot. Um, happened, uh, first of all, in the army, I went, whatever, it's a long story, but after the army, uh, when I was, as I said, when I was accepted to Cambridge, I was like, you know, on a, on a, you know, on a way to becoming a conductor in the world symphony. A lot of my friends who were like, grew up with me, or like conducting in the world today, did a career as conductors, uh, professors, and you know, who, Juilliard or whatever. And um, I had a like a mashbir. I, I said, you know, I'm not sure this is what I want to do, uh, and I stopped. I actually, interesting, you mentioned that I went. First of all, I went uh, to work on a farm, like to be a shepherd. I went to just like stop. I decided I'm taking a year off and I like, just went to work, you know, the land and worked with just with the family who lives down south. Just took a year off to do things. And then I actually studied conduct uh, psychology for a year in the Hebrew U. And as I said, just before I went to yeshiva, then I started going... Let's learn, not uh, gloss. Let's not gloss over the being a shepherd. Yeah, I was thinking the uh, same thing. Okay. Let's Your stop shepherd. there for a moment. How are okay. you, Shepard? Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> what was that like? Look, it was. Uh, it was, and it still is uh, somewhere inside of me. Um, it wasn't like that. I was. A sh I was working with, with, with you know, with, at a on a farm. Um, first of all, I was living with an amazing family, Halcina family, that they were. They lived out south of Hebron, and that. The guy who ran, ran the farm, the you know, the, how do you say? I don't know the. the yeah, he, he had like you know, animals and and just fields of 
fields of gold, so to speak, fields of of wheat and 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 and, and you know he made cheese and milk and he had you know nine beautiful children and they got up early in the morning and worked and you know just lived out in the, in, the, in the nature and got up early and davened and they were, you know it was, it was an amazing environment. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, uh, two three years after I left, he was killed. By the way, Yair uh, Sinai Hashem Yikum Damo. Uh, he was yeah outside in the field somewhere and 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 you know and imach shemam somebody uh anyway but uh, but 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 living there first of all for me uh, connected to me to myself very much I I started uh, eating differently and living differently and feeling differently and I could say also that in a sense my music was born there my language of music I was like you know pounded with you know, information and, and, you know, as I said, a career and this, and then suddenly it was like, you know, simple person and, uh, you know, just like out there with the, with the land and the sheep. Um, it was, it was, it was, it was, it wasn't easy in the beginning. It was difficult for me because I was, you know, people were like, what, what'd you do? Like, hello, you have a career. Hello, you're famous. Hello, you have, you know, what happened? I was like, I felt I wasn't there. I felt looking back at it, you know, it's like 25 years ago. Um, I think first of all, I felt that I didn't want to do classical music. I wanted to do. I wanted to sing. I wanted to be in connection with with people. Uh, I wanted to do more like you know folk music, Jewish music, and something about just you know just just the career and you know the pressure of where I was. I f- I feel looking back that I needed to stop and say you know okay, am I healthy? Am I okay? And you know I went I went to check. I went to, to study and I went to. Uh, to speak with people of knowledge, and after a few years, slowly I came back to music, a little bit from a different place. I didn't completely, uh, you know, refute the classical music, but I kind of blended it into my music, uh, using orchestras for my albums and conducting orchestras for other people. But I, I never really turned on, never chose to be a, you know, a full time conductor. Maybe it'll come back uh, lately. I conducted a concert in Echal uh, Tarbut with, uh, with. Um, Helfgott and uh, and uh, Nehmer and uh, of course Chaim Israel and there I conducted the whole concert and composed and I had an amazing experience that was a few months ago so maybe you know maybe later on in my life I'll go back to that but uh, um, right now right now uh, I'm still on the process going back to that honey I packed the bags we're moving to Rhode Island what yes you might hear that in your house and that's because Providence Rhode Island is a warm and loving out of town community in a beautiful, safe, walkable neighborhood. Okay. This is the new place. There was Tom's River, right? There's parts of Muncie and now there's Providence, Rhode Island. Amenities include schools, mikvah, kosher market, pop-ups, learning opportunities, events, various schools, close proximity to major cities like New York, Boston. And guess what? Right now they are offering $50,000 free housing contribution and a one year free tuition in their new recruitment program, 50K free housing contribution and one year free tuition. Do I have to say that again? I don't think so. You can apply for this right now at jewishprovidence.com. Uh, they are so nice. They'll help you find a job and get settled in the community. Rhode Island is a beautiful state with so much to offer. You know, it's not just about getting the free tuition and getting the $50,000 towards your house, but you want to be part of building a community. You'll be part of, you know, building it from the ground up and say, hey, listen, this is where I'm from. I, my kids grew up in Providence, Rhode Island, and we built that place. That's what you can say. So head to jewishprovidence.com and get started in your journey today. I'll tell you, Jonathan, th- this is fast forwarding a little bit to a song that you, I think, wrote many years later. But when I, when I want to draw upon the happiness and the serenity of what I do have in my life, I like to listen to your song, Smach Bni. Smach right. Wow, and that's, a much, when I, yeah, that's a much, that's much later, that song, yeah. Okay. But when I hear you describing that search... I, I'm astonished by the serenity and the simcha that you have achieved with appreciating what we do have in our life. Um, you know, the, obviously this generation is special in that sense. Um, I think uh, more and more the the demand and the quest of, you know, being uh, unique, being being MS with your heart. And this is why I really believe that, you know, that's pretty much the ultimate goal of like, 
you know, keeping every, every, you know, adhering to every tendency, every, every delicate uh, depth of the Torah. And then at the same time, not losing connection with yourself and, uh, you know, who your soul is and what your neshama needs. And, uh, and that, that search is, is, is not easy. Uh, for me, it wasn't. I'm sure if maybe other people that I mentioned this can connect to it, but I do believe and I feel, you know, where I'm holding also now today, Bo Hashem, that like it's worth, uh, you know, it's worth the voyage, it's worth the, the, the traveling and, and, and ultimately, um, the, the, the feeling at the end is simcha. Uh, simcha sure. is, you know, simcha of, you know, connecting to, to, you know, your, you know, your, your, your voyage and your, your, your mahalach, your, what Hashem, it's it's very perplexing because you know emotions, especially if a person is very emotional, which I am. Uh, so emotions overcome and questions and difficulties and but Bo Hashem, you know, I was always there, you know, with Hashem and connected to Him, and I felt that halacha and and uh, you know chokhmah uh, I was never like like modern in my in my in my uh, concept, you know, even in the days when I was an artist or a shepherd, I always knew that, you know, the, the Torah, the Shulchan Aruch, whatever it means, the Ruach HaDvorim the, is, is where I want to be and where I, where I, where I find myself connect 100%, you know, I'm always, that's always, like, always was like that. Even in high school, even in the army, wherever I was, you know, I was always searching, but I knew that I was, I, I don't want to leave that in any way, you know. Not saying there weren't times I was a little less, a little more, but I was always that. I knew that was 100% MS, you know what I'm saying? For it's me, so interesting. Yeah. It seems like there's so many, there's so many things going on in your life at this point. Like there's the shepherd, there's a the studying psychology, there's the music, which is, in, you know, in you. Then there's the studying in the mirror and yeshivas. So there's like, there's so much floating. What What would you say? your heart, I guess, gravitated to the most because I, from my perspective, it's like music, music and terror one for you. Music like and terror. Yeah. Music that, and terror. I would say that. Look, when I say psychology or shepherd, you know, it's obviously it's technical. It's not technical, but it's places you go, you know, people go to India, people go, you know, you know, I don't know, do things, to, you know, go on long trips, you know, um, that was my way of making a, you know, stopping, it's just the running of life, you know. It wasn't really me. It wasn't I wasn't a shepherd, you know. I was there what, what did searching, your you know. Think? What? what did your parents? What did your parents think about your journey o- overall? Like, what was how did they relate to what you were going through? Again, there are two people who didn't grow up religious. They weren't religious for at that at this point a lot of their life. They studied in NYU, and their son is just uh, said, "I'm going to a farm." That's you know that's good. Growing up with these kind of parents that were open, you know, the new things and did things, you know, so I always felt they were with me. They never had a problem with that. I'm saying maybe it was a little difficult for them that I kind of, they felt in the beginning, I was like, you know, what? I stopped everything in the middle and, but I felt you know, somewhere I knew they were with me and they were happy for me. Uh, you know, there were points where I was like, you know, what am I going to do? I maybe, you know, do this, do this. So they were suffering for me, but uh, I think that's a natural thing, you know, but I grew up in a home where, you know, that's, Maybe sometimes people who are about it's a little different, but in our home they were very, very open. Like uh, to who I want to marry, my my siblings they married also different kind of people. It wasn't like this is what you got to do. You know everything's very, very, very open in our home. Oh Hashem. Yonatan, I'd love to hear you talk about the time that you uh, went to the Jerusalem Kollel and became a, a Talmud of Rav Berkowitz. I I have some friends that had the pleasure of learning with you there at the same time. Um, Harab Yassi Schwartz and Elimelech Bloomstein are two of my closest friends in the world. <laughs> Elimelech is, uh, wow. Elimelech, how are you? One of my favorite human beings. Also, Yossi, everybody, Elimelech is just a very close friend. Uh, Yossi, Yossi's brother is my neighbor also here, by the way, in Givat Zev. And, uh, but Elimelech is a very special connection. I saw him last time I was in New York. Uh, thank you, Hashem. Um, thank you, Hashem. And by the way, he also, um, He's the Shad Khan in, in, in Visha Amda, by the way. Sure, and, uh, sure. Uh, Whoa, he's you not, can't he, drop yeah, that. Yeah. No, no, he was sitting next to me much on the bench in, in uh, you know, in uh, JK and, uh, and Robert Berkowitz's Kolal and, uh, uh, You wrote Visha Amda in the, on, sitting on a bench in, in Kolal? I can, comp- no, 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 no. 
Uh, but it was those times, those years. Um, I composed Visha Amda. It's funny. I came back. It's a long story. I came back from conducting a concert in uh, in Lincoln Center. Okay. Uh, actually, Avram Freed and uh, a few other singers, Duda Fisher and uh, Ellie Kranzler. It was a concert for uh, a benefit concert for uh, Meir Panim, it's an organization. Uh, and I conducted the concert. Then I actually composed a few uh, a few of the arrangements also. And uh, when I came back, I composed Visha Amda. I remember that that day. I composed a bit differently, by the way. Uh, How so? I, How differently? We're talking about, by the way, we're talking, I'm, I'm going to keep hammering home because we're yeah. talking about the song probably of the century. Like this is the song of the century. This is okay, not stop. I don't stop. know how to respond to this, but uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. There's, there's many things I can tell you about this song, but uh, uh, no, it's literally, you can write a book about this. It's, it's, um, we'll do a podcast about it. How about that? Okay, maybe, maybe. <laughs> but, um, but I can tell you, I don't know if you can hear the guitar, but yeah, we hear it. So basically, I composed this song. Uh, went pretty much like this. Chorus. And that's how I composed this song. And I actually played it to some friends and they were like, okay, it's a nice song, you know. <laughs> it's new, it's different, you know. And uh, Bloomstein, Ali Melech, was sitting next to me in Kola and then he said to me, you know, Yaakov Shweki, he's looking for music. He's he's thinking of doing composing a Sephardi album. But he was then singing yeah. more like Ashkenazi songs, but, you know, then later he did Libiba Mizrach and stuff. But yeah. he was really thinking about that then. And he said, you know, I know that you grew up in the Sephardi neighborhood. You have that kind of connection that Yaakov has also, like somewhere between the American and Ashkenazi music and then the Sephardi upbringing. You also have that. So maybe you can compose, that's what Bloomstein told me, try to compose a Sephardi song and go meet uh, Shweki. And I composed all kinds of Sephardi songs, just all kinds of, you know, Simon Tov and Mazel Tov, all kinds of stuff. And I went to meet uh, Shweki, I remember that. He was with Briskman. His, uh, his, uh, manager, uh, music, Yochi yeah. Yochi. And, uh, I played them all my Sephardi, you know, beginnings of songs. And they said, you know, I don't know, you know, this is not so good. <laughs> and I was about to leave. I was about to leave. And they said, you know, it's the share that we met. Maybe, um, maybe there's a song that you have, like, you know, you never played or you never sold or just like a song. And I said, you know, I have this song, Vishamda. I played it for a few people. People were like, I don't know, something about the song doesn't work. And I played it for them. And Yoichi on the spot said to me, and this is my a genius. Yoichi said to me, I know what the problem of the song is. The problem is that the most important part of the words is, And the most part, most, the best part of the music is the, is the, is the, is the vocal, the at the end without words. So, why don't you make a shidduch and use the words of a Kodesh Bochum Adam for the end of the song? And the chorus you have as a chorus, why don't you uh, just like say bye bye to it, you know? And uh, I said to him, you know, you know, Yochi, you know nothing about music. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked out of the room. And Yochi called me, like, you know, I don't remember exactly how it was, but he called me a day later. Or, he said, you know, I actually, we, recorded a version of the you know the, the snipping out of the parts you know like the you know the 
the we, we did the you know we did the operation of the song for you, and not only that, we're offering you to come and sing Kisaria with us um, uh, in three weeks from now, which was you know we're now in Parshas uh, Yosef. It was Mamash Vayitzumi Nabo. You know they like like what Kisaria, what Shweki, what you know. I didn't even I was just sitting next to Bloomstein, and he said, you know, I want a Sephardi <laughs> song, and here I'm going composing Vishamda and performing it as a singer, you know, with Shweki. You know, filmed, I think it was, you know, historically speaking, the first video concert of, you know, one of the first, you know, from Kesaria in Israel with the Symphony Orchestra. It was a new thing. It was one of the first, you know, videos going out there on, on media, you know, on, on, on so on, 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 on internet. Right. And I remember that. I remember those moments. And, and, um, uh, just I'm, why am I saying this? A, because I really, was Beshert, that wasn't really up to me. Like I composed the song for myself and here Bloomstein comes and tells me about Shweki and Shweki wants his farty song. And you know, I end up, he ends up changing the song for me and asking me to sing with it. The whole thing was Bichlal, you know, what, 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 you know? And so, yeah. So it was, uh, and uh, so I, I also really not, it's not my melacha, it's, I have a shoot film here. Um, and he shoot film and, you know, Oh Hashem. I want to tell you about this amazing new book from Mosaica Press. You know, you're sitting down with the kids at night and you're thinking, what should I read to them? Something that is going to make an impression on them. Something that they'll know that'll stick in their head forever. Sitting around the Shabbos table with my family. What am I going to read to them? Am I going to read uh, the Berenstein Bears? Probably not. You're going to want to read this amazing new book from Mosaica Press. It's called The Warmth and the Radiance of Gedal Yisrael. Inspired by Avishai David, or Avishai David is a Shiva, Shiva's Tar Shraga, and Bait Bagan. And this book is all about this, those Gedolim, those Gedolim that shaped the, the Kali Stral we live in today, the leaders of our Dar, story after story, lesson after lesson. Those are the things you want on your kids' minds when you send them off to school, when you send them to sleep, whenever it is. And for you, for you, it's an amazing masterpiece. It's an amazing work of art by Rabbi Avishai David. And you could have it right now. Head to mosaicapress.com. Use promo code MEANINGFUL15 for 15% off the purchase of this book. And I'll tell you a step further. Do you want to win a free book every week from Mosaica? Well, we're doing this thing right now where you can enter a raffle. And every week there's a winner. And the winner from last week, drum roll please, is someone named Emily LF. So Mosaica is going to reach out to you, Emily, because you want a book from Mosaica Press. You want to win next week? So you want to hear your name here for next week? Make sure to hit the link in the show notes in the description of this episode and enter the giveaway and you can hear your name next week. So go ahead, hit that link, buy the book, but also join the giveaway. Now back to this episode. How does it, how does it feel for you? If you could just describe, you know, there are some, some songs that people will hear and they'll be like, like, who wrote this song? Was it like written by like Avram Avinu? Like it's been around forever. It's one of these songs that you go to every Pesach Seder, many Pesach Sedarim and your version of Isha Amda is being sung and, and like sh- sh- Shabbos tables and every single Jewish household knows this song and sings this song. What that, does that, that, what does that, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't want to inflate the ego too much. Yeah, no, no, it's not about ego. I'm, it's like, it looks like I'm pain. I'm causing pain. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's a, it's a big present, you know, it's a big present. As I mentioned, it's really, you know, why it came through me, you know, I really don't know. And uh, as I said, I've, I have shoot film, I have partners in this, and, um, um, you know, I feel this generation, even though we're going through terrible, terrible things sometimes, but somewhere deep inside, uh, we all feel that Hashem is with us. And people feel the need to say, people, you know, it, it touches so many people because of these words. You know, after all these years, you know, even though it's, you know, we still have these terrible things going on, but deep inside, you can feel that people know that Hashem is with us and, and that connects somewhere deep, you know, the subconscious, the, you know, the, 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 some, somewhere inside. Um, you know, I had also all kinds of opportunities to sing, Ishamda in front of like, you know, the army generals and, you know, army bases and were, uh, you know, or you know, prime ministers and sitting in the Knesset and, you know, 
seeing people just saying that, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Matzilenu Miyodam, you know, okay, there's the army and Baruch Hashem, amazing soldiers and amazing army and, but there's somebody up there with us all the time and I feel that, you know, that, that obviously is seeping into Klal Israel everywhere and uh, that's, it, re- it reflects in that song. Obviously it's a big schut for me, but as I said, I, if it would have left up to me, it wouldn't have, ha- you know, I wouldn't have composed it that way and they probably would have never made it there. So I owe it to Briskman, to Bloomstein, obviously, to Kodesh Baruch Hu. My, 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 brother, my brother wrote a song, happens to be many years ago, and he, he sent it to Yochi. And Yochi, it seems like Yochi has funny reactions to songs. The song he, my brother wrote was Pischi Li, and he ended up selling it to Simcha Liner. And wow. Yochi Brisman bought it, and when Yochi heard it, he said to my brother, my brother's name was Yochi, and he said to him, you didn't, you didn't write this. You know, one second, where'd you get this from? Wow. Well, so I just, I wrote it. I sent you the demo. That's me singing on the demo. He's like, one second, like, this doesn't make sense. Yo, he did his research. He's like, Yutaka wrote the song. Yeah, we'll buy it. Wow. <laughs> and they made it the title track. And then it's just, but Yochi, Yochi. Just these people, yeah. No, a lot of, he's a genius also. Uh, I know he told me once how he discovered, uh, like he has this you know just like people have the ability to invest you know buy this you know this building and then it's worth the billions he has this ability to, to like you know look at something and say this is what you need to do uh, also how to change it around I've been in touch with him also about other songs he has like this you know this chokhmah to see um, and so yeah play that, oh, wait, Yonatan, you look a lot more comfortable with the guitar in your hands I'm just saying <laughs> it's just my chubby my chubby uh, you know I just don't <laughs> no. I want to ask you about a different song you wrote, Ashira. Yeah. I think Opa. there was something that that happened in your life. You said, you, you know, right now, Baruch Hashem, you have seven children, but, but you were going through some uh, some stuff at that, at that point that led you to write that song. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, without going too much into details, uh, one of our children was hurt and then we had to go through a difficult time. But uh, I remember just composing that song Actually, you know, going through those days, where my avoida was mamash. I remember that avoida, my rabbonim and my friends and my family, who all stuck the avoida of like to mamash to behold, you know, that Hashem is. Ani you know that everything, everything is for the good, and I know that you know will turn out for the good. And right now, even with difficult, and mamash, remember that was my avoida. I was just that was where I was trying to hold all the time. I had nothing to hold on to, except just like Hashem. I know that you're with me, and Hashem, I know that you're, that, you know, I'm, but I, w- I don't know if I was in my heart over there, but I was trying to be. That was my avoid, though. And, uh, you know, that song, I was, you know. Geli bibi shuatecha Ashir al Hashem Shir al Hashem Shir al Hashem Ki gamal alay Shir al Hashem Shir al Hashem Shir al Hashem Ki gamal alay So uh, yeah, that was that. I was singing that song, you know, going in and out of hospitals, and just it gave me a lot of strength. And Baruch Hashem, you know, obviously we know that it doesn't always work out to the good. Sometimes, you know, this not this world is not the way we want it to plan. We know that we're in the hands of Hashem. Whatever is, He does is for our best, for our for the world. But uh, we had a miracle, and Baruch Hashem, uh, we went through it. Baruch Hashem. It was many years ago, so I'd rather not go back to it, but that's, that song was born there, yeah. Well, Interesting, the song, the song is a, a lot of people, I know it's a chupa song. A lot of people uh, call me and they ask for this song to be a chupa song, and uh, uh, interesting that it worked out uh, there, because really it's a song that came out of a lot of pain, a lot of holding on to life, you know. It sounds like maybe like a kind of happy and easy song, but it was, you know, Written in Hebrew, we say "midam libi" from the blood of my heart. It was like somewhere from the deepest, deepest depth of you know holding on to life. Gewalt. 
Jonathan, I want to I wanna ask you, I think you have an, a, a unique ability to transcend lines, cultural lines, and religious lines, where a lot of the, the Haredi musicians are doing an amazing job of putting out music and connecting the you know the, the crowds to to certain music and certain messages and to certain ideas and concepts. Um, but I think you've done such a fabulous job, whether it's collaborating with secular artists or just presenting your music to the masses of the Jewish people and taking concepts that are so deeply rooted in Torah and Yiddishkeit and Dveikas Hashem and offering that up to people that don't necessarily spend all of their time and all of their days learning Torah and davening and connecting in the more traditional way to their to their creator but you with your with your music you're touching you guys, their shama we can't go on like this with all these you know <laughs> this is, it's not gonna work yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to quit soon guys just too much for me but uh, let's see here but that's the shim uh, we're, I'm part of a group of people that are doing this and uh, it's true that I was one of the first to, who started this great crossover uh, when I started by the way it wasn't so popular for like religious singers to sing for a secular world. And I'm also going in and out of that. Like sometimes I'm more like, I feel like my crowd is more like, you know, uh, you know, uh, from sometimes I feel that like it's, it, it depends what kind of song and album and just things are changing all the time. You know, really, I remember when I started, so it was very, very rare, like that, you know, like literally from artists had, you know, secular audiences. And I remember when it started with Katonti and songs before that, Kimi Tzion And uh, I remember that the feeling was just like, uh, Mamash, I remember walking in the street or opening the radio and I felt, you talk about ego a lot, but I really, I, I, obviously everybody has ego, but I felt, I felt like such a warmth of like, you know, just connection and something. And I also felt like that, the, that you know, when people responded, it wasn't like, ah! You know, it wasn't wasn't that at all. It was like, thank you, like some, you brought me home. You know, something about something. You know, I, I didn't I didn't walk around saying feeling like a superstar, rather like somebody who who helped connect things. And and that was you know it was a good like very calm kind of feeling. I wasn't walking around feeling like you know even till today, I don't feel the energy of which is by the way I think bichlal, but. A lot, a lot of you know, from artists, the energy isn't so much of like a star, you know. It's more like of a, you know, it's more like of appreciation or happiness or thankful. You know, people are thankful to you, and, and you know that energy is energy is a good energy. Obviously, it's not a secret. It's it's you know, it's become a, I don't want to say mainstream, but it has become a very powerful, you know, um, vessel in 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 our society in Israel, bichlal. And uh, I feel also that it's a big present that um, all this younger generation. That started, you know, to, to go, you know, cross over bigger boards and, you know, world. And I feel it's amazing that these are the people that the young people learn to look at. You know, people who have families, people who learn, people who have, you know, another. And um, you know, I think yeah, it's, it's it's a big present for Amistral that you know it's not rock stars. You know, who you know, we know what that means when we grew up. You know, parties and you know cars and you know clothing and drugs and everything but it's you know people who as i said wake up in the morning go to minion go to learn and you know it's, it's an amazing dogma town appliance ah so you know it's a new year everybody and new year means not much <laughs> honestly what does new year mean for you i don't know besides maybe rosh hashanah is my new year but january what does it mean probably just some tax things you know what it might mean though it might mean that it's time to take a look at the appliances in your house and say does this need to go? What's that noise that the dishwasher is making, honey? I don't think that's normal. Maybe it's time we call Town Appliance. Maybe we've been putting it off too long. Maybe it's time that we call Town Appliance. The fridge, the, the light is it's flickering, and there's this smell. What's this smell? Maybe it's the food in the back, but maybe it's because the fridge is just faulty. Maybe it's time you need a new one. Regardless, you're going to call Town Appliance because they've been the number one appliance store since 1979. And if you're not the type of person who makes, likes making phone calls, like me, head to townappliance.com. And if you're not the type of guy that likes going to websites because it's so 2021, then maybe send them a message on WhatsApp. 
hit the link in the show notes in the description of this episode and start messaging my friends at Town Appliance to, hey, heard that crazy ad on Meaningful People. Check my fridge. It's not moldy food. There's something actually wrong with it. Help me out here. Send them that text. I wonder what will happen. Anyways, if you need an appliance, you're going to want to go to townappliance.com. I had the opportunity to sit here and talk with my friend Shmuel Sackett. Uh, Shmuel, why should people enter the Dream Raffle this year? Can you tell me something about it? Entering the Dream Raffle this year is more important than ever because in addition to winning the million-dollar luxury apartment in the heart of Yerushalayim, as we do every year, this is the sixth year of the raffle, but this year the money is going to incredibly important causes. For example, we're helping rebuild farms in the Gaza area. We're helping Kitot Konanut, the civilian security teams. You know, as bad as it was on October 7th, as horrific as it was, what prevented thousands more from being brutally murdered were these local civilian security teams called in Hebrew Kitot Konanut. And we are providing them with all of their equipment. We're also helping lone soldiers. And uh, we just raised money to buy a bulletproof ambulance for the people in Steyrot. All this from the funds of the Dream Raffle. You heard it right there. You're going to use promo code MPP. You get some special deals on tickets. I kind of think this is my year. I'm feeling it in the air. I'm going to win that million-dollar apartment in Israel. Maybe take the cash. Win the apartment, take the cash. Well, guess what? If you don't enter, you don't even make a decision. So let's join that thought process of cash or apartment, cash or apartment, and buy a ticket at dreamraffle.com. I, th- I think a lot of it is happening. You know, We're seeing it now more than ever. The, the gap is getting sm- smaller and smaller. And Achdus and Klai Sorol is... Is that a is that a great place right now? Um, and I, I'd say a lot of it is because of these musicians that are coming out of Eretz Yisrael, like Yishai Ribo, Akiva, you know, different musicians, and and it's, and, and yourself. Um, I don't want to give you a compliment. I I want to keep this interview going. Stop right there. Sorry. <laughs> um, but but what do you think is is the is the key to closing that gap in a way that's going to be everlasting? And and. <laughs> and bring, Bringing the Yidin together, whether they're how from Haredi, Chiloni, whatever they are, how do we close that gap? I think you know that's the you know that's the that's what's going on basically. That's the main subject of everything, of you know all the elections and the Corona and the wars and the, that's what's you know, that's 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 on the table as we say in Hebrew. Yeah. Um, and there's no real answer for that. Obviously, the more people understand where a from person, whatever he is, but where he's coming from, and what you know, I think growing up when I was like you know in my twenties or even before, so a lot of people just didn't know a lot of you know Chiloni people who weren't connected. They didn't really know what it's about, or they grew up thinking, oh, this thing, you know, this dark thing, you know, you know. I remember also growing up when I was even younger. You know, the, the, the ultra orthodox or others who were like, you know, somewhere, you know, behind the mountains, you know, Golos, you know, I don't know what. And Bokhoshan, things changed. Things changed also because, you know, a lot of, also because of the internet, but also not just, you know, today when you speak to any person, you know, people know a lot. I'm talking about people, any person that, you know, he knows, he learns about, you know, things, he reads things, either through the TV or he dabrut or the radio, the internet. He le- people are just a normal person in, in Israel. You speak to a Yiddish guy, you can meet somebody who's, you know, earrings and, and he's like, he puts on tefillin or he learns once a week or people are like open and, 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 you know, they want to, you know, and, um, and also feel this, you know, the, the, the from world is also opened up in a sense. Some of it is not so good, but some of it is good. People working, people in the army, through marriages, through just like just just the neighborhoods, people connected in a way from both sides in a sense. Things that were changing. I have to say that obviously that the year before this war is is you know th- th- something terrible happened here in Israel and and uh, you know I somewhere inside I feel almost like people were worried about Am Israel getting together too much, and they say we have to do something to make this stop because something too good was happening. Uh, you felt it in the air. People were just like connecting and learning and just loving each other. And, you know, things were happening. And then suddenly like, you know, no, you know, everything was just turned, you know, turned, turned around. And, uh, but yeah, obviously we're all praying that, uh, that we'll get there one day. That's a shame. That's, that's the goal. Uh-huh. I think that, that's the job. Know. That's the job of Mashiach. 
to reveal the light to break down all those walls. Zero, that's what Mashiach needs to do. And uh, Bemet, Bemet, keep knocking. Ash- you gotta keep knocking. Yeah, but I'm saying also, Hashem promised us that it'll happen. I'm saying there's a Rambam that says that, and and uh, it's up to us, you know, to, to to be, you know, to show the love of Hashem and to be Shem Shavai Mitahev Aliyadcha, you know, that people see you and say, ah, a dogma of a person, you know, children, family, relationships, you know, music, whatever you do, Skidish Shem, people say. But then I always say to myself, you know, it's all, not only in our hands, it's almost not Bichlan in our hands. You know, the fact that music has become so popular and, you know, who could imagine this? You know what I'm saying? Something really in our hands. Shem's doing it. He has his ways. Boch Hashem. He knows what he's doing. So we can sit back and just enjoy the show. Obviously, it's not not easy, but because um, it's taking a lot of time. But on the other hand, it's also very deep and very emistic, I think. It's doing a lot of deep, so to speak, therapy to, to people, to cultures, to us as a nation. I think we're going through something very deep and uh, important, maturing in a sense, after all these years in Golos and... Uh, you know, returning to who we are and returning to our language, our, our neshama, our neshama klalis of Am Yisrael. I think it's, you know, important. It's painful, oh, but important. In, in that sense, Hashem yeah. is the ultimate conductor in conducting all of that process. Best conductor. I want to ask you, there's something that stands out to me and and um, I'm sure it's standing out to our listeners as well. Humility. Give give us a little talk about it a little bit because you are you are obviously someone who's very humble, and you you've achieved a lot of success. Have to ask your wife life. and children, I don't know, but uh, no, it, it, uh, it's I'm, I'm not going to go further. Yeah, I'm just going to say you're, 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 you're somebody you're somebody yeah. who's humble. <laughs> you're somebody who's humble and and you're you're in a how do you know a, how do you know okay how okay, do I know because I want because when I talk about the Vihisha Amda, which is like you know we know what it is. You're closing your eyes. You're, 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 you see right now. Like, so, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, what, what's the question? What's the question? Question a tip on uh, is this uh, something you worked on? Is it something you worked on to have the humility that you have, or is it something that it was just born in you and, and something your siblings have? And so, if you're saying that, I have to agree that, that I have to agree with it. If I answer the question, I have to agree that I'm humble. So, that, that you don't have to agree. Like it's, a, it's not, it's, it's like saying the sky is blue. You don't have to agree, but oh, psh, oh my gosh, Hashem, you here? Yeah, <laughs> uh, um, is it something you worked on the only thing I can tell you Stam, you know, do with my, with my upbringing is that like first of all a few things about my upbringing that I must you know I'm giving this thanks to my parents first of all like I remember growing up like when I was practicing music or or whatever I did like we always I just remember growing up that my parents admired people like for example, I'll give you a funny story. Uh, we grew up when we grew up in Achlot, so um, so the, it was still like a very rundown kind of community. Like they were they were actually very poor people, and they were also uh, like people like you know drug addicts and and like people you know you wouldn't want to walk around so much. Just like not the be- best people to be in touch with, you know, not my age, but people even you would say scary people. And I remember that my parents always like there was this family living across the street. That you know, we knew they weren't the, like the best, okay. But I never ever felt for my parents, you know, don't speak to that guy. Or you know, I remember my father meeting them in the streets, says Bokir Tov, and I remember like even like if I used to play, practice music, like playing you know Chopin or Beethoven, you know, somebody walk in, my parents, would, ah, you know, stop, somebody's here, sit down, let's talk. Like I never felt that my father said you're this and he's not this. Never, ever in any. Any kind of, you know, Sephardi, Ashkenazi, rich, not rich, Hasidic, Lithuic. My, my parents, my mother also never made us feel like, I think they never made us feel important. Start with that. I never felt like, you know, my children, my parents saying, wow, our children are hoo-ha. Never. Like, you know, like for, I remember, for example, this could be a stupid example, but I remember, for example, this is kind of something I almost never told, but growing up in Akhlaut, there was like, sometimes like exploding like the, Excuse me, I have to say this, but like the 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 sewer, how do you say? It, right? Like yeah. the, That's how you say so it. This is old this is this is old neighborhoods and you know, you open up the street, it's like, you know. And I remember literally remember like I was a little practicing and my father said, Yonatan, it's dirty outside, let's go and clean it up. And we you know, 
he took us, you know, to like clean the streets and do like, like he was never like, oh, my children, they're musicians. So, you know, they're not going to do that. So it was also like something about human beings and also about like, you know, he never said my children are not going to do that. I think that my parents were like, uh, both of them, how do you say, because T, um, they would, they would question things I'd say. Like they, I would say something, they, they were like, okay, let's think about that. I would say, oh, but, uh, you know, I was like, okay, maybe somebody thinks differently. So like when you grow up in that kind of environment where like, you know, you're not king and you're not super duper special, you, you're loved. I felt very much loved, but I didn't feel like people were, you know, my parents were like, oh, our son, Yonatan, is such a special genius. No, you know, okay, you know, Yonatan, let's do this. You know, then here, this is our neighbor. Yeah, he's, you know, okay, yeah. I, I think, you know, maybe... Uh, I don't want to talk about myself, but I see my brother Aaron, for example, <clears throat> my brother Yehuda, my sister Rika. Uh, they're very simple people, and they, you know, they're they're very loved by a lot of people. Maybe that's part of our upbringing. Maybe myself yeah. I have to work on it. Yonatan Nachi Nachi has taught me to be kind, so I want to be kind and take the focus and the spotlight off of you because I think you'll thank you. uh, thank you. I appreciate, you'll appreciate <laughs> that. And I want to ask you about David Hamelach and. <laughs> And he, I want and to he ask yells. you. I want to ask you specifically about David Amelech in this historical context that we are in today, because we hear a lot how everyone has a distinct role in this war, in this Mohama, and there are people that are on the front lines as warriors with guns in their hands. There are people that are providing the spiritual fuel for our brothers that are holding guns. There are people that are sitting in base medrash. There are people that are going to army bases and singing and giving people spiritual energy and physical energy. And one of your songs that I happen to love personally is the song that you wrote about David Melech, who is Yodea Nagin, Yodea Gam Lehilachem, which is which is such a brilliant articulation of how multifaceted of a character David Melech was. Of a right. of a neshama that David Amalek was, <clears throat> and the Knesset Yisrael, the Nishmas Yisrael today, I think has to so deeply tap into David Amalek in order to reveal the light of Mashiach. And I'd love to hear you describe what David Amalek means to you. So first of all, you uh, you said it pretty you know said it pretty good. Uh, well. Um... So I think, you know, we all have like a longing, this kind of king, this kind of leader that has that combination of just, you know, being the bravest human being and, you know, but then being the most delicate human being and uh, and that, that kind of leader where you know that he that he sees you and, and can play a song for you and then if needed, he can also kill Goliath. Or... I think, about, in a sense, also, um, you know, Moshe Rabbeinu was like that. Had mercy on the, you know, the sh- on his, on the, on, you know, on the, on his, uh, has animals. Uh, the, on some, his flock. Flock, yeah, thank you. And uh, then, when needed, you know, he took the mitzri, put him, put him in the in the in, in the sand. You know, he had had uh, that. You know, the story says, we went to see how his brothers are doing. So he, he came from a heart, and then when he saw somebody hurting somebody, and he knew it was a Russia, he just took him and put, you know, shem and forest, boom. You know, no, that ability to have those both, you know, that that ability is, uh, you know, something um, that we have longing for and uh, is somewhere deep in our subconscious, our nation's subconscious uh, about David Melech. Obviously, David Melech is special also because of Tehillim, you know, the, you know, the fact that he was, you know, suffering so much and saw death around him and always chose life and chose, uh, you know, last week I went to speak to a soldier who uh, I went to play for him in a uh, in hospital you know he was uh, in Aza and they shot a, uh, a nun tet. It's a, it's, it's, it's like a bomb on his leg and his leg. I don't want to tell a terrible story. And and uh, Boch Hashem, you know, he's already walking. It's, it's an amazing story. He's he's you know was saved. His life was saved. Uh, Yosef Shlomo, Yosef Shlomo, and uh, and he asked him what song do you want me to sing, and he said, you know, I want you to sing Hallel. 
I want you to take songs from Halal and sing me songs from Halal. I said, why? He said, because if you look deeply in all the Halal songs, it's all about, you know, and uh, you know, I was, you know, I was near death and I chose life. And David Melech brought that energy, you know, that, that, that secret uh, to our life. And it's been with us for these thousands of years ever. You know, and any, any, you know, chas shalom, any, you know, any difficulty, any tzara, or, you know, any hospital, David Melch is with us, you know, that, that image of David Melch. And, and between me and you, I feel that, you know, our soldiers today, our warriors, they're small images of David Melch. They're, you know, if you meet them, you know, they're very, you know, delicate people and very humble people. Talking about humble, go meet those soldiers. You know, yeah. me, it's easy to speak humble. You know, I composed a song or two, but then, you know, and always, you know, quiet about it. You say, I went conducted an orchestra and go go meet a soldier who like, you know, was I'm the guy who manages this music school that I have with me. He was, for seven weeks, he was inside. You know, six children, you know, he walks out, you know, he saved, you know, he killed, I don't know, 30 people, saved, you know, he's like, oh yeah, good. I just came back, yeah. Never say a word about what he did, you know, never, oh yeah, you know, okay, you know, I was in there for seven weeks, you know, I was living in an Arab's house, you know, for seven weeks and I killed, you know, and I saw blood and saw people dying. Yeah, okay, you know, so what, you know, that's real humbleness, you know. Yeah. So. Uh, as as we, we wrap up, if you can step onto a stage and it, the entire Am Yisrael will hear one message and you have like, you know, one or two lines to say it to the whole world, what, what message would you impart? that somebody is watching with you know watching us between the small claves the small small holes in the window watching over us in every one of us there's uh we know we know inside that uh just uh we need to relax and let it let it shine, relax and let it show. And uh, the quieter, the better. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I'd ask is that I never heard an acoustic version of, a, of Katonti. You want to grace us with that? A second. I start with this. Ve David of D. Le'olam, le'olam Gagu'in, 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 gagu'in Wene eman, neman Du 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 Katonti mi kol chasadim u mi kol haimet chasita et avdecha. Katonti mi kol chasadim mi kol haimet chasita et avdecha. Bemakli avarti ta yarden ata iti lishne machanot atzileni na atzileni na. Tzilenina Makli avarti Ta yarden ata iti Lishne machanot Hatzilenina, hatzilenina Hatzilenina Kebab Thank you so much for joining us Wishing all the best Merit Hashem Same to you Keep on doing good work And Merit Hashem 
we'll meet here soon with good news and Yeshua and Bracha and we just started the new year, we just finished Zoyz Hanukkah. So Pi Chassidis, that's Mamish, the closure of the Tchila Sashana and uh, we should Mamish uh, with all the energy and all the matanas of this new year we'll start an amazing, amazing year that we remember, we will remember this year forever at the beginning of the Geula. Amen. Amen, amen. Shana Tova. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you for listening or watching this episode of the Meaningful People Podcast. If you are watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, hit that bell that goes ding, because every time we upload a new video here on YouTube, you will be alerted. And we don't take that lightly. We take that responsibility very, very heavily. We sit there and we're like, hmm, should we upload this? Because it's about to alert thousands of people. Fine, let's do it. Boom. You want to be one of those people alerted. We put a lot of work into our content and we are so appreciative that you are a viewer. So hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, and we can't wait to give you more content coming next week here on Meaningful People. If you are not part of Meaningful Minute Plus yet, hit the link in the show notes of this episode, in the description of this episode. We have a special, special group, Meaningful Minute Plus, where we have a lot of these conversations on Zoom for our Plus members. It is free now. It is absolutely free. So join that group. We get on Zoom with so many different people who've had on this podcast, and you can join those. So hit that link below, and we will see you again next week.